بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ ٹیچرز السلام علیکم آئی ایم راشد سلیم ود لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی سیون آف فنکشنل انگلش ون ان لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی سیون وی آر گوئنگ ٹو رائٹ آرگیومنٹیو ایسیز اٹ سم تھنگ وچ از ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا پریویس لیسن ان لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی سکس وی لرن ہاؤ ٹو and how to state our opinion uh, but mainly in lecture number 26 was we focused on oral communication listening and speaking today we are going to uh, move a step further and we are going to learn how to write an argumentative essay but first let's have a quick review of what we learned in lecture number 26 and it is also important Uh, to note here that the skills that we learnt in lecture number 26 are really going to be useful for lecture number 27 as well. In lecture number 26 we learnt how to ask others opinions and how to state our own. We also learnt how to politely agree or disagree with others opinions. We learned to use some polite expressions for interrupting. And finally, we learned how to give pros and cons of a debatable topic. By pros means sporting or favoring an argument and cons mean uh, uh, confuting or rejecting a debatable topic. So pros and cons means Uh, sporting or refuting a debatable topic. So whatever you learned in lecture 26 is really going to be essential for writing an argumentative essay. But uh, let me first look at the objectives of lecture number 27. After completing this lecture, you should be able to identify and analyze an argumentative essay. That means whenever you come across an essay which is argumentative, you identify it. You differentiate it from other kinds of essays. And you also analyze it for its pattern, organizational pattern, or its structure. Uh, by that we mean how information, ideas or opinions are organized in the argumentative essay. Well, there are sub-skills involved with this and one of those sub-skills is to be able to differentiate between a debatable and non-debatable statement. Not all statements are debatable uh, and you can't write an argumentative essay unless you know the difference between a debatable and a non-debatable statement. You'll also learn how to organize your ideas or opinions. Basically, argumentative essay is to convince others, to persuade others to take certain action or to agree with you on uh, a particular issue. And if you will not organize your ideas well, it will be difficult to convince others or persuade others. In lecture 27, we'll also learn uh, to use certain expressions for sporting or refuting ideas. In other words, uh, for giving pros and cons of a debatable topic. Uh, some of these expressions you learned in lecture 26 already, so we will just be solidifying those and we will learn some new as well. Uh, finally, you will be required to write a short five paragraph argumentative essay and that should give you uh, the, the required practice and you should in future be able to write argumentative essays of short length. Okay, now we move on and first of all we look at the definition of an argumentative essay. Uh, of course the exact formal definition is not required. 
uh, you don't need to cram it, you don't need to memorize it, you just need to have an idea to find out what an argumentative essay is. An argumentative essay is similar to a persuasive essay in which you set out to persuade the reader to agree with your position on a topic. So important thing is the purpose of writing an argumentative essay is to persuade, to convince your audience. And uh, you want to persuade the reader to agree with your position on a topic. So your position, your stance, your viewpoint is an important thing when you are writing an argumentative essay. So there are two ma major elements of an argumentative essay. Uh, that you hold a position or a standpoint about a particular topic. For example, uh, you are against animal testing and you want to persuade other people um, to ban animal testing, right? So you make a statement, something like uh, animal testing should be banned, right? And uh, then you give your arguments, you give your, uh, uh, your ideas or opinions in order to convince your audience to uh, agree with you. So what, what do you do? You make a thesis statement. Thesis statement means your standpoint, your viewpoint, your stance. And you use facts, data, and other evidence to prove why your th thesis is correct and logical. Uh, in order to persuade your audience, of course, you need to uh, provide evidence, you need to provide data and facts, because normally, people are not willing to change their opinion. Um, and if you really want them to change, uh, if you really want to change their opinion, you need to be really very convincing and you need to be logical and uh, you need to be, to provide some evidence, okay? So an argumentative essay is basically one kind of essay in which you present an argument and you try to persuade the audience over an issue. Uh, so you have a thesis statement or your stance and you want to convince your audience to uh, agree with you. Now the question here arises, what are other kinds of essays? Basically there are four kinds. Uh, you have learned about a narrative, you have learned about expository, descriptive. Uh, this is the fourth one, argumentative or uh, persuasive that you haven't learned so far. Uh, in a narrative, you narrate an event. In descriptive, you describe an event or a place or a character. In expository, you explain a process or uh, a series of steps or you explain how something is done um, or how something is uh, performed. So you should look at an argumentative essay in a larger perspective and you should be able to differentiate an argumentative essay from uh, an expository, a descriptive or um, a narrative essay. Okay, I hope that now you have some idea of what an argumentative essay is. Let's move on. Since argumentative essay is about an argument, and usually we have an argument over a debatable topic. If there is nothing to debate about, uh, you don't need to persuade people and hence you don't need to write an argumentative essay. So first requirement is that you have a debatable statement. Your statement must be debatable. 
So let's first find out uh, whether a statement is debatable or uh, non-debatable. Debatable statements are those statements with which other people might or might not agree. Okay, so these are such statements uh, that have room for disagreement. Uh, people might agree with it, people might disagree with it. Uh, these statements are sometimes called arguments. Sometimes these are also called assertions or claims. Uh, very often we use the word proposition for such statements. Uh, and in schools and colleges when uh, we hold debates, we give uh, the students a proposition. And our students, when they debate on these propositions, either they speak in favor of these propositions or they speak against these propositions. So propositions are really debatable statements. Uh, in terms of logic, these are called premises, right? Uh, you, if you have read logic before, you have an idea that a uh, premise, by the way, in Urdu is called kazia. Um, for example, if we say that um, all green apples are sour, this is a premise, this is a claim, this is an assertion, okay? And this is a debatable uh, statement as well. All green apples are sour. This apple is green. Hence, this apple is sour. Okay. Um, so this is the logical deduction. Um, or you can say the, um, the, the three logical steps that usually we have. Uh, so when we say all green apples are sour, uh, this is a premise. So you have first premise, you have second premise, and you can derive the third premise from the first two, or you can conclude from uh, these two premises. Uh, in other words, uh, for our purposes, debatable statements uh, can also be called as assertions, arguments, propositions, or premises. Here is an example. Solar energy is the best way of solving Pakistan's energy crisis. Now, do you think this statement is debatable? Um, that means, do you think there are some people who might disagree with it? If you said yes, you are right. Uh, because some people might not agree with you that it is the best way. They might agree with you that it is one of the ways of solving Pakistan's energy crisis, but they might not agree with you that it is the best way. They might, for example, uh, say that uh, wind energy is more useful or hydel power is probably uh, is a better way. Okay? Uh, we, we don't really, uh, we, we can't really be 100% sure that all the people would agree with this statement. So, since there is room for disagreement, there might be some people who disagree with this statement, therefore, this is a debatable statement. Non-debatable statements, on the other hand, are those statements with which no one would normally disagree or argue. Please pay attention to the word normally. Of course, there are circumstances when some um, uh, some people would disagree, no matter how uh, no matter how non-debatable a statement is. So some people uh, might disagree or argue, even if it is non-debatable. Uh, sometimes these non-debatable statements are also called facts, and if you can recall. Uh, we learnt the difference between fact and opinion in the previous lecture. In lecture number 26, we learnt that a fact can be verified from reality, whereas an opinion is, 
is our own preference and uh, people can uh, differ from our opinion uh, but fact is something which could be correct or incorrect so uh, or which could be true or false for example here we have a statement major crops of Pakistan include wheat sugarcane cotton and rice uh, now this is a fact you can verify it from uh, from the official uh, figures facts and figures so it is non debatable statement although you might find one or two people who might uh, disagree with you uh, but that won't be uh, under normal circumstances that won't be uh, a normal expectation okay so now that you have learnt the difference between debatable or non-debatable uh, and non-debatable uh, statements here is a, a task for you uh, the task is which of the following statements are debatable and which are non-debatable right so uh, let's look at these statements one by one and then decide whether these statements are debatable or non-debatable sentence number one computer and automation increase unemployment so is it debatable or non-debatable the right answer is that it is that it is debatable not all the people would would agree with this statement uh, some people might think that uh, computer and automation have increased uh, employment rather than unemployment. Uh, they have provided opportunities for more people uh, to do more work in less time. Okay, statement number two. Plants produce oxygen that the world needs to sustain life. So oxygen that the world needs to sustain life is produced by plants. That's right, it is a fact and uh, we can verify it. It is a scientific phenomena, a phenomenon, it is uh, a fact, so it is non-debatable. Number three, injustice and poverty are the root cause of terrorism very often we hear this statement uh, but is it debatable or non-debatable it is debatable uh, because these two factors might lead to terrorism uh, but we can't be hundred percent sure that these are the root cause there might be other root causes ideological differences could be the root cause of terrorism uh, the psychological uh, imbalance could be the root cause of terrorism in a particular individual uh, although these might uh, injustice and poverty for some people uh, might be uh, what we call uh, might support this cause but uh, they do not necessarily uh, are the root cause of terrorism. Statement number four is Nanga Parbat has claimed the lives of many mountaineers. And if you said it is non-debatable, you are right because it is a fact and you can uh, verify it from uh, facts and figures. How about the next statement? Education is essential for successful life. Is it debatable or non-debatable? Yes, this is debatable. Uh, maybe initially you thought it is non-debatable because we give uh, importance to education. And of course, education is uh, uh, important in many ways. But is it essential for successful life or not? 
This question is really debatable. Essential means necessary. But we learn, we know that there are lots of successful people in the world who did not receive formal education who were formally uneducated but still they were really very successful businessmen or really successful in, in other professions. Um, so it is debatable. Statement number six is education plays important role in advancing one's careers, career goals. This one is non-debatable because we all agree that education plays an important role uh, in advancing one's career goals. Um, it might not be essential. Some people might be successful even without it. But we cannot deny the fact that education um, plays an important role. Not the most important role, but it does play an important role. So this is non-debatable. Statement number seven, technology has made our life convenient. It is non-debatable because of course it has made our life convenient. Although it might have uh, brought some harms, some dangers, some negative, uh, some minuses, some negative points, but uh, the statement here is not that. The statement is technology has made our life convenient and we have to agree to this part of the statement. Um, so first of all we need to learn the difference between a debatable and a non-debatable statement uh, because uh, this is crucial for writing an argumentative essay. Okay, let's look at task two. Uh, now you are going to write one debatable and one non-debatable statement about the following topics, about mobile phones. For example, uh, you are going to write one debatable statement and one non-debatable statement. And I would uh, like you to pause the lecture here and write down one statement, uh, debatable and one non-debatable statement for each of these topics and then you can continue with it. Mobile phones, for example, um, debatable statement could be uh, mobile phones, the disadvantages of mobile phones outweigh the advantages. The disadvantages of mobile phones outweigh the advantages. This is debatable, right? Uh, but if we say that mobile phones, uh, excessive use of mobile phones is, uh, poses health problems. Excessive use of mobile phones poses health problems. This will be a non-debatable uh, statement. Now you are going to uh, do the same for the rest of uh, this the, the topics, these topics are really very common and very often we have debates on democracy on television, on media. Uh, so uh, you can make both a debatable and a non-debatable statement about uh, these topics. Okay, let's move on. Uh, now, an argumentative essay is written to convince or persuade the people. Uh, and it could be, in fact, an argumentative essay could be in the form of a research paper. Uh, but uh, here we are going to talk about writing a short paragraph. And usually uh, in academics, uh, we use a five paragraph formula to teach our students to write argumentative essays. Uh, so it's a, it's a good thing to start with five paragraph formula, but uh, remember later on that uh, there could be more or less paragraphs in an argumentative essay. As long as it presents an argument, as long as it gives uh, evidence or it tries to persuade uh, the audience uh, 
uh, over an issue, um, it is called an argumentative essay, whether it has more than five paragraphs or less than five paragraphs. Uh, now, basic structure of a five paragraph argumentative essay, or in fact all kinds of argumentative essay, basically they have three parts in it. The first part uh, or introductory paragraph contains the thesis statement. The second part, the body paragraph, uh, these th three here, uh, they give the sporting details or they give the, uh, the pro and con uh, ideas about our thesis statement. And finally, we have the concluding paragraph. So you'll see that in all these three patterns, uh, the basic structure is the same. First paragraph is, uh, gives thesis statement and the last paragraph gives conclusion. Uh, same here and same here. Uh, the only difference is, uh, the only difference among, uh, between these three patterns is the body paragraphs. Okay. Uh, your argument, you can either support your argument or you can refute others' argument. Okay. If you are supporting an idea, it is called pro. If you are refuting an idea, it is called con. Okay. So uh, pattern one is that you start with a thesis statement. You have one paragraph that gives thesis statement. Then you have in the body paragraph, uh, first, second paragraph is uh, pro idea one. Then you give pro idea two. And then you give con idea or you refute the, uh, the popularly held idea by the others. And finally, you give the conclusion. So usually, once you have decided with a thesis statement, uh, you should uh, make an outline of your essay uh, by using one of these patterns. And you can write pro idea one, pro idea two, and then you can elaborate it. You can um, uh, elucidate it in the essay. Pattern two is that you, rather than starting with pro idea one and two, you start with a con idea. Uh, so, uh, for example, you begin with a popularly held opinion and you refute it. And then you give uh, pro ideas uh, in favor of the thesis statements. Okay. Uh, in pattern three, you don't have any pro ideas. Instead, you simply use the refutation technique. So you uh, present various ideas that are usually given against your thesis statement and one by one you uh, refute each argument or each idea. Uh, as I said earlier, five paragraph formula is only one of many ways of writing an argumentative essay. And usually it is advisable to uh, start practicing with this five paragraph formula, but this is not uh, an end in itself. Uh, once you have learned the art of persuading, you can actually uh, write argumentative essays in less than five paragraphs or more than five paragraphs, or you can uh, use uh, none of these patterns. You can maybe uh, mix uh, some of these patterns together uh, or you can come up with your own pattern. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is the five paragraph formula and you think, uh, you know that in each of these patterns the most important thing is thesis statement. Okay. So now we are going to look at what we mean by a thesis statement. A thesis statement is a statement in an essay that you plan to support, discuss, or prove. Okay. Uh, so it is a statement that you want to support, that you want to prove, or that you want to discuss. Uh, a thesis statement has these characteristics. So whenever you read uh, an essay, 
uh, you should look for these characteristics and if you find them you can be sure you can be certain that it is a thesis statement um, thesis statement on has only one topic which is your subject plus your comment uh, that is your point of view for example if you say that corporal punishment should be banned corporal punishment is the topic should be banned is your point of view so this is a thesis statement corporal punishment is uh, should be banned is a thesis statement because it gives the topic and it gives your point of view or your comment it should have at least one verb in it okay uh, at least one verb uh, and here the main verb uh, in our example is corporal punishment should be banned the main verb is be and should is the moral verb uh, focus narrow enough that it can be developed in the assigned length of the essay for example you might be asked to write an essay of 750 words um, an essay of 500 words or an essay of 1000 words uh, it should be narrow if it is too general if it is too generic uh, then it's not an appropriate thesis statement thesis statement should be narrow enough We'll talk about it in detail later on. So if you haven't understood it fully, um, just wait, be patient, and it will be clear. Okay, uh, another thing is that it is not a simple announcement. You don't simply say that uh, in this essay I'm going to talk about kite flying. You are merely announcing a topic. And this is not a thesis statement because... Uh, I'm going to talk about kite flying does not give my standpoint, does not give my point of view. And without giving a point of view, uh, it, it, can't be an, uh, uh, it can't be a thesis statement. Okay? Uh, so these are some uh, facts. how we can uh, develop a thesis statement. You normally start developing a thesis statement from a topic. Okay? So for example, think that uh, the topic is drug use. Okay? This subject is too broad for an essay of 750 or 1000 words. So you need to narrow the focus to a specific aspect of drug use. Uh, you can narrow down a topic either in place or in time uh, or in event. Uh, for example, here you can uh, have a first attempt at a thesis statement and instead of drug use you say bad drug use. Because you know drug use can also be uh, beneficial. Uh, it could it could have the medicinal benefits. It could be used drugs. You know, uh, drug store uh, uh, is also or uh, medicine is also a drug. Um, so bad drug use. You have narrowed it down. Now you are not talking about. Uh, medicines you are only talking about bad drugs but uh, this is only a first attempt and it is still not a very good thesis statement it's not a thesis statement uh, because it is still too broad a topic uh, and you have to uh, reduce it because otherwise you won't be able to write uh, an essay of 750 or 1000 words on it so let's do a second attempt on it and this time you write drug use is detrimental to society okay now uh, this is not an idea presented in debatable form most people would agree with this statement you see if uh, you make a statement like this drug use is detrimental to society uh, 
you don't think there is any room for disagreement left here majority of the people uh, in fact almost all the people would say that yes uh, drug use is detrimental to society so we need to improve upon it and uh, hence we have third attempt at it illegal drug use is detrimental to society because it encourages gang violence all right now uh, this statement has a clearly focused topic and a debatable opinion because uh, not all the people would agree that uh, gang violence is encouraged because of illegal drug use the topic of drug use has been narrowed down to illegal drugs and the detriment has been narrowed down to gang violence detriment to society is too general so you have narrowed it down to only gang violence this is a much more manageable topic this narrower topic will allow you to support your point of view and offer your own conclusion on the issue so now you are ready to write uh, a complete paragraph on this thesis statement and uh, this will also help you write the argumentative essay okay uh, now be aware uh, some statements they look like thesis statements but actually they are not uh, so let's look at few things that are not a thesis statement a thesis statement is not a word or phrase of course it is a statement so a statement should be in the form of a sentence if it is a word or if it is a phrase uh, it is uh, it is not a complete statement it is merely a fragment and therefore it is not a thesis statement for example if uh, you want to write an essay on youth about youth uh, you can say that it is a topic but it is not a thesis statement so you need to uh, develop a thesis statement out of this topic uh, similarly violence in cities is a phrase it's not a statement so of course it's not a thesis statement uh, second thing is that a thesis statement is not a personal preference Okay. For example, if I say T.S. Eliot is the best American poet or uh, Titanic is the best movie I have ever watched, uh, these are my personal preferences and uh, this is not an op opinion which is debatable. It's rather my personal preference and uh, there are, uh, I mean, we don't need to give reasons for personal preferences. if you like onions um, do you need to give any reasons for this you might like it or dislike it for any reason it's a matter of taste so a personal preference uh, is not a thesis statement okay uh, another common mistake that we often have is uh, that we start it in the form of a question and we say how can we check extremism in Pakistan check means stop extremism in Pakistan now this is really a question it's not a statement it's a question and this question does not clearly state uh, whether uh, extremism in Pakistan can be checked or cannot be checked or uh, it, it doesn't give an argument and uh, it doesn't give our standpoint whether we are in favor of that argument or against this argument it is simply a question it's not a statement does smoking lead to other drugs it's simply a question and uh, therefore it's not a thesis statement similarly a thesis statement is not a fact we have discussed it already uh, water is in short supply in the Middle East this is not debatable because it is a fact it's not an opinion and most of the people would agree to it normally they would agree to it therefore uh, this is not a thesis statement 
Similarly, a uh, thesis statement is not a mere announcement. So if you say I'm going to write about the tourist attractions, tourist spots in Pakistan, you are merely announcing a topic in the form of a sentence. But it is not a thesis statement either. So you have to be really careful when you are writing a thesis statement. Uh, and you must look at the characteristics of a thesis statement earlier on. Uh, it should have a verb in it. It should be in the form of a sentence. And uh, it should contain a debatable idea or opinion. And it should clearly state your standpoint or your point of view. Normally we use the word should or should not. Like uh, mobile phones in the classrooms should be banned. Smoking in the public places should be should not be allowed. Okay, uh, these are good thesis statements because they have a verb in it, they have a debatable uh, opinion in it, and they clearly state our standpoint. Uh, we are not asking a question. So. Uh, once you have learned to write a thesis statement, normally it is not difficult to write uh, the argumentative essay. Okay, now uh, let's look at some examples of thesis statements. Okay, and keep it in mind uh, that earlier we talked about a few things. We said that a thesis statement should be narrowed down so that we can cover it within 750 or 1000 words or even 500 words. Statement number one, all athletes should be required to take a drug test before any sporting event to ensure equal competitive opportunity for all competitors. Now this is a very good example of thesis statement because it gives the viewpoint of the writer. It says should be required. Okay, we have a verb in it and we have the moral verb should in it. Okay, to take a drug test before any sporting event. Okay, we are not talking about taking a drug t test in general, we are specifying it before any sporting event to ensure equal competitive opportunity. So we have narrowed it down uh, even further. Okay. But still it is debatable because other people might think that it is a wastage of time or some people might think that uh, a drug test before any sporting event uh, might not be feasible or uh, it might be wastage of time or um, it, it might be unnecessary. So it is still, uh, th there might be some people who would disagree with it. So it is a good thesis statement because uh, it contains a debatable opinion. It gives a clear point of view of the writer. It is given in the form of a statement and uh, it is narrowed down. Okay, number two, the most effective way, uh, the most effective way to decrease youth violence is to eliminate all violent video games. Again, we have the standpoint of the writer clearly stated. The most effective way, the writer thinks that this is the most effective way to decrease youth violence is to eliminate all violent video games. And uh, here, uh, violence has been narrowed down to youth violence, violence committed by the youth. And uh, only, we are focusing only on one of the, 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 the culprits, one of the major main causes of youth violence, and that is violent video games. So we have focused, we have narrowed down, we have presented a debatable topic. All the people would not agree with it. Uh, some people might even say that 
these violent video games, they give, um, um, they let out uh, the sick, uh, you can say, or pent up feelings uh, in us. Uh, in other way, they provide a catharsis for us. So, in, um, rather than showing violence in actual life, uh, we can. Um, we can be violent in these video games and hence we'll be cultured later on because of catharsis. So this is debatable. I mean, not all the people would agree to this statement. So this is a valid thesis statement because it has a clear standpoint of the writer, viewpoint of the writer. It is debatable. It is put in the form of a statement. It is narrowed down and it is focused. Okay, let's look at number three. Electric cars provide a viable alternative to gasoline-fueled cars because the benefits outweigh the costs. Again, you know, uh, the opinion is clearly stated. There is no doubt. The standpoint is clear. Uh, we are comparing uh, two kinds of cars, and we are focusing uh, on one particular benefit that is uh, price or the cost. Okay, uh, another thesis statement could be there should be an absolute ban against smoking in public because secondhand smoke endangers the health of non smokers. All right, uh, again, you know, we have the word should in it, it is a statement, not a question. Uh, an absolute ban, a clear standpoint or viewpoint of the author has been given here, and it has been specified smoking only in the public, not smoking in general. Uh, secondly, we will look at uh, a focused aspect uh, that how it endangers the uh, health of non-smokers. In other words, we have narrowed it down uh, the effects of smoking in the public and the effects of smoking on the passive smokers or the non-smokers. So these are some good examples of thesis statements. Um, in fact, if you are able to write a good thesis statement, um, you have written almost uh, a good argumentative essay. The second most important thing that now you require, once you have done, written your thesis statement is uh, to provide ideas, to prove your thesis statement with evidence, uh, with uh, facts and figures, uh, or uh, with logic. Okay. Now let's look at an example or a simple argumentative essay. Uh, well, <coughs> With this lecture, I have provided a sample argumentative essay as a handout also. So you can download it. Here I am going to display that essay uh, paragraph by paragraph. So I have cut it into five paragraphs. Uh, but uh, you can download the whole essay from the, uh, from the handout section. Along with this sample argumentative essay, I have also provided another handout uh, which will uh, give you a guideline for writing uh, a good thesis statement. Okay, now let's look at this sample argumentative essay. Uh, here is the title of this essay, Health and Healing at Your Fingertips. This is the first paragraph. I'm going to read it out and then we'll see uh, whether it is a good opening paragraph for an argumentative essay or not. It starts with a sentence like an order, with an imperative sentence. Throw out the bottles and boxes of drugs in your house. A new theory suggests that medicine could be bad for your health which should at least come as good news to people who cannot afford to buy expensive medicine. However, it is a blow to the medicine industry and an even bigger blow to our confidence in the progress of science. 
This new theory argues that healing is at our fingertips. We can be healthy by doing re uh, Reiki on a regular basis. Okay, uh, so here we have the introductory paragraph of an argumentative essay. Uh, I want you to look at it once again and uh, underline or find out the thesis statement in it. That's right. If you said the last sentence, we can be healthy by doing Reiki uh, on a regular basis, uh, you are right. This is a thesis statement. Okay. We can be healthy. This is a clear statement, a standpoint of the writer. And here is uh, a particular uh, thing that we can do on a regular basis. It is Reiki. Okay. Uh, but it starts with uh, an eye-catching uh, statement. If you agree with this, the final result of agreeing with this thesis statement would be that you won't need medicine anymore. You would uh, have to throw it out of the window. Okay? And uh, this is a new theory. It suggests that medicine could be bad for your health. Okay? So uh, this first paragraph actually gives us a clear thesis statement and a valid thesis statement. Now we see how this thesis statement is, uh, is developed in the body paragraphs. Let's look at body paragraph number one. Now uh, this is a long paragraph. Uh, I want you to go through it. Uh, well, maybe I should read it out for you. Sporers of medical treatment argue that medicine should be trusted since it is effective and scientifically proven. They say that there is no need for spiritual methods such as Reiki, Yoga, and Tai Chi. These waste our time, something which is quite precious in our material world. There is medicine that can kill our pain, X-rays that show us our fractured bones, or MRI that scan our brain for tumors. We must admit that these methods are very effective in the examples that they provide. However, there are some everyday complaints such as back pains, headaches, insomnia, which are treated currently with medicine. When you have a headache, you take an aspirin or vermidon when you cannot sleep you take Xenex without thinking of the side effects of these. When you use these pills for a long period, you become addicted to them. You cannot sleep without them. We pay huge amounts of money and become addicted instead of getting better. How about a safer and more economical way of healing? When doing Reiki to yourself, you do not need anything except your energy, so it is very economical. As for its history, it was discovered in Japan in the early 1900s, and its popularity has spread particularly throughout America and Western Europe. In quantum physics, energy is recognized as the fundamental substance of which the universe is composed. Reiki depends on the energy within our bodies. It is a simple and effective way of restoring the energy flow. There are no side effects and it is scientifically explained. Uh, of course, this is a very lengthy paragraph. And uh, can you find out the, the, the pattern which is used in this essay? Whether the writer begins uh, by giving by supporting his thesis statement, by giving cons, or he starts with, uh, sorry, uh, does he start it with, uh, by supporting his thesis statement, by giving pros, or uh, does he start it by giving cons? Yes, you are right. He starts with a con, um, with uh, 
and then he refutes it. So he says, um, supporters of medical treatment, they provide this argument. Uh, they say that there is no need for spiritual methods and we should always use the scientific methods uh, or medicine. And then later on, uh, the, writer, the writer refutes this idea and he says that uh, medicine has side effects and uh, Reiki does not have any side effect and it doesn't uh, you don't have to uh, it is economical because you don't have to pay money for this so he refutes this uh, con idea uh, by giving uh, logical arguments and examples he gives example of insomnia headache etc uh, etc et or back pains okay um, in the next paragraph he again starts with a con opponents of alternative healing methods also claim that serious illnesses such as HIV AIDS and cancer cannot be treated without drugs and then he refutes it I, I would like you to pause the video here and read this paragraph on your own so that you can have uh, an idea uh, of this paragraph yourself. But basically, the writer uses the same technique here. He starts with a con idea, uh, with a con idea, which is an idea against the thesis statement, and he refutes it. Then we have the third body paragraph, and in this paragraph, he again starts with a con idea. Some people may still maintain that in our material world, everything depends on time. Uh, and then it is even lacking time that causes much of the stress that leads to the illness we mentioned. Okay. How would it be possible to find time to do Reiki to ourselves and the people around us when we cannot even find time to go to the theater? Okay. Uh, so here he starts with uh, another con, uh, another uh, contrary idea uh, against or another idea which is against the thesis statement and then he um, refutes it. So basically he is using pattern three of uh, earlier five paragraph formula that we discussed. And in pattern three, uh, there is no con. Uh, there are no pro ideas. There are only con ideas, and writer can, uh, refutes them. Okay, and here is uh, the name of the writer, and here is the concluding paragraph. I would like to read it uh, out to you. Having said these, resistance to Reiki would be quite illogical. Reiki is natural and drug free. What is more, it is easy to learn by anyone regardless of age and experience. It can be used anywhere, anytime. It also enhances physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being and the benefits last a lifetime. It is definitely high time to get away from the drug boxes we store in our drug cabinet. So you see, uh, it ends with a definitive persuasive statement uh, a clear-cut stance so there is no doubt here uh, the writer is convinced himself and he wants to persuade us uh, that Reiki is good and we should avoid uh, we should stop using drugs instead we should start using Reiki all right so here you have looked at a sample and you have learned how we can de develop it by using five uh, paragraph uh, formula. Uh, in this essay we saw pattern 3 has been used but you can use pattern 1 or 2 uh, if you find it convenient. Okay now I want you to quickly look at uh, some language which you can use in order to give uh, cons and pros. When pointing out opposing arguments, you can say opponents of this idea claim or supporters of this idea claim or maintain that. So you can start your paragraph with this. You can also start your paragraph with this. Those who disagree are against these ideas may say or may assert that. 
Some people may disagree with this idea. So these are uh, some popular ways of starting your uh, con uh, idea paragraphs. You can also, uh, when stating specifically why they think like that, you can say the, the, uh, they put forward this idea because it should be they, not the. Sorry for my mistake. They put forward this idea because they claim that since so uh, here is the claim and here is the reason for their claim and then um, when you reach the turning point where you want them to change their behavior or you want them to take certain action or you want them to change their opinion you can say however but on the other hand so you are refuting their uh, statement so you start with the con with these statements, you uh, f find out the reason or the logic behind these claims, and then you refute them with these uh, words, however, but, on the other hand, etc. Okay, when refuting the opposing idea, we may use the following strategies. So there are three strategies here. One is compromise but prove that their argument is not powerful enough. For example, you say that they have a point in thinking like that. To a certain extent, they are right. Okay? Or you can completely disagree with them. And here you can say, after seeing this evidence, there is no way we can agree with what they say. Uh, I would personally say that giving complete disagreement can be very persuasive, but you need to give a clear-cut evidence in order to refute it. Okay, uh, another strategy could be that you say that their argument is irrelevant to the topic. Very often, you see, people present their arguments which is irrelevant and you can uh, point that out. So you can point that out with this piece of language. You can say, what we are discussing here is not what they are trying to prove. Their argument is irrelevant. So uh, these are the common phrases or sentences that we use in order to refute an argument. Okay, with this we come to almost uh, the end of lecture number 27, uh, but don't forget there is a practice situation all the times and uh, this is a really important thing. Uh, you are going to write an argumentative essay on any one of the following topics. I have given these topics in the form of a statement, but I would like you to improve on these statements first in order to develop your thesis statement before you write a complete essay. So what should you do? You should first choose uh, one of these topics. You should narrow it down to make your thesis statement, and then you should use a five paragraph uh, formula uh, using five paragraph formula, you can uh, uh, write your evidence, your uh, sporting details in the form of an outline, and then you can develop an essay. So here are the uh, topics. I'm, I'll read them out. Students should not be allowed to grade their teachers. Our examination system does not measure the student's ability. Corporal punishment should be allowed in primary schools. Now these three are actually related to our school's education, so uh, you would feel pretty comfortable writing about these. And I'm sure that you ha definitely have an opinion about these. Technology makes us more lonely than social. Normally we say that social media is making us social, uh, but um, I'm of the view that technology makes us more lonely than social. Okay, the last one is political use of military force against Taliban is justified. Uh, you can choose one of these and you can write your own argumentative essay around it. So with this we come to the end of lecture number 27. Uh, here is the summary once again. In lecture number 27 we learned how to identify and analyze an argumentative essay. We learned how an argumentative essay is different from a narrative, a descriptive, and an expository essay. We also learned how to differentiate between a debatable and non-debatable statement. We also learned how to use uh, different 
pattern and formula how to organize our ideas when we are writing an argumentative essay. We learned some useful language and we used some expressions of supporting or refuting ideas. Uh, in fact, I would like you to uh, use the language and expressions that we learned in lecture number 26, uh, agreeing and disagreeing and stating an opinion. You can actually use some of those language expressions in these argumentative essays as well. And finally, we learned to write a short five paragraph argumentative essay. So with this, we come to uh, the end of lecture number 27. Hope you enjoyed today's lecture and it is really a uh, hope that it would uh, be beneficial for you and now you would feel more uh, comfortable writing an argumentative essay. And if you are an English teacher, you can, uh, you can make your students write effective argumentative essays. Thank you very much.